Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. I am back today with a technique that we need to remember. This is just one of the most basic sort of techniques that there are, but you can get stunning results and it's something that I even I need to remember to come back to. It is just simply stunning with not too much effort and you're going to see that here today with my ink blending. So for this you are going to need some sort of water reactive inks. So today I'm going to be using some Simon Hurley inks. I've got Tropical Tango, Overzealous and some Psych. These are sort of yellowy, greeny, tealy kind of colours and then I'm actually going to bring in some clear skies later on. But as I said, water reactive is key. So you can use your Distress Oxides. You can use your normal Distress inks. You could use some Catherine Pooler inks. You can use anything that is water reactive that is going to reactivate when you add water to it. So here's the clear skies that I'm going to add to. I am going to use finger dobbers today. Now these are not always the best way for covering large amounts of space smoothly but you're going to see that this actually doesn't make a difference because this does end up a bit of a hot mess. <laughs> and you're going to see that you don't have to spend time blending, you don't have to spend time getting it smooth, your colors don't even have to be perfect together, and that just makes life easier. It makes life good when you don't have to spend lots of time doing it. Now, if I had spent more time, uh, I probably could have got these a bit smoother. If I had chosen different colours, I could have got it together nicely as well. And Simon Hurley inks really do blend beautifully together. Uh, I am just using a piece of regular cardstock today. I use the Frencheville brand, which we can get here in New Zealand at Spotlight. You can get identical in Australia Spotlight as well. Um, it is just a smooth, beautiful cardstock, great for blending, holds quite a lot of wet mediums like water and things. Um, absolutely brilliant for alcohol markers, all the good things. So I couldn't uh, rate this highly enough. I do get the 300 GSM one. Now, once we have added the ink onto this, this is the next part. You are going to want some solid stamps and these two leaf clusters on the right and leaf canopy on the left are my maybe two all-time favorite stamps. These are older stamps from Old to New. However, I think they may well still be available. And I know that lots of you have these because boy, have I done a lot of videos using these. Now, the key here is to make sure that your ink panel is dry because we are going to be using embossing powder and we most certainly do not want the embossing powder sticking where we don't want it. So, do a test. Do yourself a favor and just pour a little bit of embossing powder out. If it sticks, it means you need to dry your card front more. And there is nothing more frustrating than doing some stamping and then discover that actually your ink was wet and now the embossing powder is sticking everywhere. I'm going to be using some Versamark sticky embossing ink for this one, but any sticky embossing ink obviously is going to work. Something else that you could add to help ensure that you just get embossing powder where you want it is by using an anti-static powder tool. There are several different versions out there on the market. I know some people just use corn flour and a sock or a little, um, if you're able to sew, you can sew a little pouch. Uh, all good things. Just another tool that can help uh, keep the embossing powder where we want it. Now, if you are struggling to see where you have stamped, then just stamp a couple and then add the embossing powder. You'll be able to see where it is. You don't have to heat set it yet because if you are using a Versamark ink pad, then it's going to stay wet for quite some time. So you can stamp all over, make sure that I'm getting relatively good coverage and keeping them somewhat close together. I don't want them too spaced out. And we are going to add the clear embossing powder over top and this is going to trap the ink underneath. Now, from here, there are actually lots of different ways we can go. If you wanted to do the Joseph's Coat technique, you would just uh, heat set all of this and then add black ink to the entire background and the embossing would resist it. 
that's a fabulous technique it is beautiful it has beautiful results particularly if you use bright gorgeous inks underneath but at the moment you can just see I have all of that gorgeous embossing and the reason that we picked water reactive inks is because we are going to take the ink away so all you need for this is just plain water I have got some paper towel to help soak everything up I am just going to spray the water I'm going to give it a fairly good coating now this is what I mean that the Frenchville brand and cardstock holds up to water really well because it doesn't warp too badly at all. I'm letting the water sink in for a minute and you can see all that beautiful ink move around and you can see it all there. Now, if I was thinking at the time, I maybe could have used a second piece of paper to get another print off this. I wasn't thinking and that's why I just used the handy towel, but that's another option in case you want to try it. If you want to keep lightening the background, then just add more water. Keep adding more water and you will take away more of the ink. So you can definitely see those leaves a lot now. Now I know at the moment this background is, it's okay, it's good, but just wait until we add the focal point. Now this here is so beautiful. The Ladybug and Leaf die set. Now, this is from Lawn Fawn, obviously. This is new to me. I think it might be newish, a newish release. Uh, I don't really keep up with new releases, to be honest. Um, but I am going to take my inspiration from that little picture on the back and pretty much follow what they've done. I have this uh, matte stack here. This is like double sided, so uh, it's got like the red color it's going to have a light red on one side and a darker red on the other side same with the greens or same with every color that's in here this is really good for when you want to do some layering there are several pieces of each color which i love i'm just going to cut out little pieces for to create this little ladybug that we have here um and so there is kind of a background piece to stick everything onto and then the layering piece that you cut out in uh, well, if you were me, I did reds and a black just to make the ladybird. And then I am obviously going to do the leaf as well. I cut the leaf out in some greens, run these through my big shot die cutting machine, and these cut like a dream. It makes life really easy. I do not love a whole lot of paper piecing if it's difficult, if there's lots of pieces. But this was perfect for me. I did use a little bit of mint tape here. So this is sticky side up just to put this whole leaf back into place so that I could do some ink shading. Absolutely not necessary. You could also cut out several different colors of uh, green cardstock and add those into the leaf. I've got plans for this leaf as well. Um, leaves are just so... It's a really good staple to have in your stash because they can be used in so many different ways. So I intend on using this gorgeous leaf uh, in some future videos as well. Now, this little ladybird, easy, easy to put together. As I said, there's that backing piece and then an outline, which are both cut in basically a black cardstock. Uh, if you wanted to, you could add some double-sided adhesive sheets to the back of all of these things before you die cut them. But sometimes I find that to be a little bit wasteful. So for this one, I just was using some liquid glue to pop everything in place. And it was so easy. The red parts are just all one piece. So you really just pop them in. There's only two black circles that you need to uh, pop in. The rest are already part of the outside bit. And then there's the top head and that little fill in bit for the back piece. And we're done, which is definitely my kind of style of paper piecing. Uh, now you'll see later on I actually added in a couple of little uh, eyes onto my ladybug, but that's a personal preference. Then we're moving on to the leaf again. This is super easy. I've got a darker green cardstock and I cut out the outline in that and I also cut out the base for that. I mean, technically, if you were just putting this down onto solid cardstock, you wouldn't even need to cut out the base. You could just use the outline and then fill it all in. But because this was going to be a standalone piece, I did need the base for this one. Again, I'm just using some liquid glue. You want to make sure that you use a liquid glue that doesn't uh, have any sheen or shine. Once you have let it dry, once it's completely dried, you don't want anything that if there's spillage out the side, you don't want to be able to see it. So even though it looks like you'll see some glue and you can kind of see the white at the moment, when it's all said and done and dried, you won't be able to see anything. I give it a good press down upside down and then I'm going to add in all my little pieces. 
These are super easy. There's only six little pieces of leaves, which I appreciate. And this is where you could definitely have some fun, whether you wanted to do some darker, some lighter, all sorts of patterns here. But I'm actually going to keep this really super boring because I don't want to take away the entire focus away from the background. I think having something entirely so bright and different in the foreground would um, take the focus away. So I want people to still see the gorgeous background that we have worked on. I am taking some Sizzix adhesive sheets and I'm going to pop it on the back of the same color that we used for the background of the leaf. I have the happy birthday die here. This is just nice and delicate and loopy and gorgeous. And I'm going to die cut that, run that through. Then I also have these framed rectangles. Now this is something I purchased recently and I know you're going to see it in lots of videos because this is pretty fun. The largest one creates a border just ever so slightly smaller than a four and a quarter by five and a half inch uh, card base. So you can see it on there. But you can see through these gorgeous little gaps on the outside, it creates so much interest to an already gorgeous panel. And I really, really like these. So I know that you've already, depending on which order they come out in, uh, I've been seeing, I've been using these a lot in videos. I was able to just take off the release paper from behind the happy birthday that made life very, very easy. Then I'm going to take some of my most favorite foam tape and pop this behind my leaf. Once I take off the release paper from both sides, you are able to bend and curve this around any curve really sharp, like 90 degree turns is easy. You just have to take off both sides of the release paper first. So this little leaf is popped up on some foam tape. This card is actually really simple, but absolutely stunning and didn't take too long to put together. I am going to take a white gel pen and just run some highlights along the leaf. You can absolutely skip this if you want to. It would be really fun to add glossy accents to this leaf. It would be fun to do it in different colors. I can't wait to show you some different alternatives as well. Then this is where I popped the little eyes on my ladybird because I couldn't help it. And then I'm going to put everything all together. This is the best technique if you are wanting to line things up. Have four tabs coming out around the side and one tiny little bit in the middle that is uh, completely off, so it's sticky. Then once you've got it in place, press down the middle and then pull each of the tabs and you will have everything perfectly centered. So that is there on the card base and that extra little detailing around the edge just sets off this card, I think. Then add on our ladybird and we are all done. This is such a gorgeous card with a really fun background technique that we need to remember to do and you certainly don't notice my ink blending. So let me know what you think of this card. I love this one. I cannot wait to make more. The supplies will all be listed down below of course. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye.